Is your laptop sizzling more than a barbecue? You could get a new one. No, you should get a new one. Or you could watch this tutorial on how to replace your thermals. Rather, your thermal grease. Get ready, Dell Latitude 7480. And while you're busy with that, I'm going to drink a coffee. Okay, let's open up this case. So take note there, that's the Dell 7480. Quite a, I'm going to say popular laptop. I would say powerful, but not that powerful, but very popular. So let's have a look at this. To remove, we do have to remove all the screws. They are mounted in the lid itself, which is quite handy. Makes it more difficult to lose them. But in terms of getting these out, really no trick. Just make sure you get a screwdriver bit that is appropriately sized. And uh, the next part gets a bit tricky. So how to open this up? Now you could just use a bit of brute force, but screwdrivers will be ill-advised. I go for something soft like an ice cream stick. There it is. So a gentle pry just to loosen it up. The back end's probably the best. You'll notice it's a bit weak in that corner there. So you've got to be a little bit delicate, a little bit careful, but gentle twist there and we're in. Okay, there it is. Okay, that looks rather impressive. Very nice when these cases allow you to do, and there's that self-fitting screw, excellent. But very nice when these cases give you a bit of freedom to repair. So that there's our CPU uh, fan, there's our heatsink. You can see the attachments there, quite a few screws. But we'll come back to that. There's our RAM module, one of on this machine, and that's our SSD drive, which is quite handy as well. So, Let's scan through the motherboard. What else is here that is of interest? Well, I'm sure we're gonna find quite a few things. That would be our SIM card slot and our flash memory slot. So again, very well equipped these particular computers. Now scanning around, what else can we do? Well, one of the most beneficial things you could do is replacing the supplied M and B key. We'll say SSD rather than NVMe because these run at a slower form factor or a slower speed. So we're going to replace this one. We're going to throw in a Samsung 970 EVO Plus, which is going to be a much, much more capable NVMe SSD drive. Oh, that looks really good. Okay, let's have a look at this. So very easy to install. You will notice a slight difference in the design. So let's zoom in on that a little bit. You'll notice there we have two different styles of key and the one on the left being our 970 evo the one on the right being our m and b key which is a slower or rather older form factor now they're not usually uh, plug and play you'll notice there are some differences on those pinouts but on this particular machine they're really good they're designed to take m and b key and just m key so really useful. So in goes our Samsung 970 Evo Plus. That's going to make it boot really quickly. And we can install our Windows operating system. In my case, Windows, but in your case, could be Ubuntu or any other software that you might uh, want to run on this. Okay, a little delicate on that fitment there. Does this actually fit? Who verified this? No, I'm sure it fits. Let's try that again. Okay, got to be gentle here, make sure you align the M key, that's the most important part, but otherwise that just slides in, a uh, little unusual how it just falls into place, but every design is slightly different. Okay, there's our screw, you'll notice it is magnetic, that's really useful to make sure you don't lose these screws, if you do lose them, don't fret, you can find them, but I guess they can be hard to source sometimes. Okay, let's move on to the next, oh that's a bit dirty there, that's okay, we'll come back. Now, how do you get the RAM modules out? That's the right question in case you want to upgrade. Let's have a look. We'll come back to the CPU, so stay tuned. But you'll notice here for the RAM modules, they actually look quite difficult to remove. I mean, where do you start? It looks perfectly flush. But you'll actually notice off on the side flanks, there are these tiny little brackets. I'll show you how to deal with those soon, but there's one of the RAM modules. This is an 8 gigabyte. You'll notice the form factor is a little bit different from what you might be used to. And this one's a 2400 megahertz. So let's really look at this. So there's our little tab in the middle of our RAM module. You'll see corresponding tabs on the motherboard. You do want to keep an eye out for those. That tells you the orientation of the RAM. Now let's slot it back in and see if I can give you a better view. 
really difficult to record here, but you'll notice as we apply pressure, there's these little clips off on the sides. Those are the ones that you want to just gently pry open to get that RAM module to pop out. So just like that, very, very easy, gentle pressure. Not a lot is needed to get these to pop out. Just like that. Easy. Okay, that's RAM, but we're not here for the RAM. We're not here for that SSD. We're here for the CPU. Oh uh, yeah, Techno, if you want a second RAM module, you could totally do it. Okay, CPU removal. Working at my optimal speed. Look at that, that's really fast. Uh, don't worry, the footage was sped up to not bore you. Let's get through. So quite a lot of screws there. I'll point them out for you just briefly. But yes, they've all been removed already. So quite a few that you want to keep an eye out for. And uh, very important to get all of those. This little bit here is our power plug, which is actually critical and really delicate. So how do you remove it? Well, don't go in there for screwdriver. That's a bit barbaric. I'm going to recommend going in with something softer. It's okay, I'll show you how to do that later. But for now, that's all loose. Let's get the rest of this off. So it can sometimes be a little bit difficult and better to use something that's not going to cause problems like the ice cream stick. Now I did technically skip a step here, you should remove the battery, that's right, remove the battery, but I haven't done it because, well we'll just say I know what I'm doing, so I'm fairly well uh, experienced, hopefully, hopefully I don't short something out. Okay, there it is, there's our copper heat plate, quite well designed, but never enough cooling on there, and that is one big mess, what is that? Okay, it's meant to be our thermal grease, laptop started running a little bit warm, there's our isopropyl alcohol or propan 2 ol very useful alcohol that evaporates that's my top secret uh, CPU spreader yeah a little bit large for these very very small dies there's our Arctic Silver 5 thermal grease that's going to come in really handy but we'll save that for later for now we got to clean this mess up that is a lot of thermal paste wow kind of funny how it's all over the place except for on the CPU die itself that's really annoying that's okay we'll try and clear it all off or should I rather say the IHS the integrated heat spreader so you'll notice there are two chips there we've got the CPU presumably on the left hand side and the GPU on the right hand side now just scanning through there quite a bit of thermal paste fell off during that cleaning procedure you probably didn't even see it, it was so fast uh, this one on the other hand was a real mission, so maybe the thermal paste wasn't quite as degraded but was no longer making good contact with the CPU uh, heat, should we say, uh, spreader. So it was really tricky there, had to try and scrape it off, used again something soft rather than metal because you will scratch up that copper without too much trouble. Okay, once it's all clean, again take your time on this but you want to get a nice sparkle on that copper. Oh, I've made a bit of a mess, better tidy that up before that thermal paste goes everywhere. Okay, so there's our very, very sparkly, arguably, heatsink. Now this is ready to go back on, but before we can do that, we do need to do our thermal paste. So I'm using Arctic Silver 5, there are several other brands that are really good. This is one that I have used for decade, well probably at least a decade now, it's been a really good trusty paste. and. Overall, it serves me well. Whoa, that's way too much thermal paste. It's okay, I'm used to very large CPUs. This is uh, delicate. I feel like we need a microscopic tube to do this. Okay, that's okay. Now, normally you just throw this back on, but I've got a few tricks here. So I apply thermal paste to both the CPU and... Oh, nice CPU spreader there. Or grease spreader, but I apply it to both surfaces. We'll come back to that, but for now, here's the spreading technique. Now, is it necessary to spread? Spread. Well, if you watch certain videos, they might say no, it's not, but I'm going to argue that it is so that you can ensure you get even coverage. The IHS or integrated heat spreader there does need to be fully covered to make sure you're highly efficient with that cooling process. Now, while I botch up the heat spreader, oh, that's really messy. Wow. I uh, really need to design a slightly smaller top secret spreader there. That's really, oh, that's messy. Okay. Okay, but you get the idea. The idea is you're going to spread that round. I'm going to clean off the excess there. That's just not up to my standards. But the idea is we're spreading the thermal paste out to make sure we have good even coverage. Now, just when you thought you were done, uh, last little little trick. 
So to try and avoid air pockets, it does help to place just a tiny, tiny little drop in the middle. And I say tiny, but this is really not gonna work because the uh, thermal paste here just doesn't know how to come out in a very small amount. That's okay, we'll just put a nice blob in the middle. It's still gonna be way less than what the manufacturer put on these chips. Okay, that was way too much, but it just doesn't wanna do small drops. Okay, that's okay, we'll just leave it like that. Just pretend there's a small drop on there. And same on the side, we'll try and mimic more or less what those CPU and GPU uh, heat spreaders would be. That's pretty close, I'd say, hopefully. Okay, that's good. So at this point, we can put it back together. There is an ample amount of CPU grease. I'd normally run way, way less, but that's okay. This laptop works really hard and uh, might be worth giving it a bit of extra thermal paste. Okay, so refitment, very easy. Slot that back in, grab your screwdriver. Now, this is a really critical step. You wanna do a crisscross pattern and I just get them started on each corner once you get them started, you get the option to very slowly tension them up. Now I'm going to recommend doing this in a crisscross pattern, as you can see there. That's really critical to make sure you get even spreading of the contact pressure. If you don't do this, you could, oh, I mean, potentially you could crack something. You could even cause uh, some damage to the motherboard. So take your time, do it nice and even. You just want those to lock into place, keep an eye on pressure, it should be nice and even to ensure we're a good spread. Okay, finishing off the screws, then one final very important detail. You'll notice the ice cream stick, far more delicate for this process. Keep in mind, right now I haven't removed the battery for this machine, normally you would want to do it. You can see the battery connection right up top of the CPU conveniently, but this one here is just for our CPU fan. So we'll try and never get that back in. Dual wield there, very useful. So we'll gradually work this in and it's actually really easy to remove, but it's so small, can be delicate. So keep an eye on that cable as well, make sure it's nice and flush. Excellent. Okay, let's move on to the next step. This was too easy. Now, battery removal. I highly recommend that you remove it if you were to try and do this procedure. And there's just a few screws holding that in place. And overall, that's pretty easy. It just sort of slides out, but you do want to keep an eye on this power point here that will have to be removed. It's much larger than the CPU one, which helps, but same thing. Once it's out, you can just lift that out and stick it to the side. And overall, that should be good as gold. Okay, refitting the back plate. Now, back plate's pretty easy. Just make sure you align it correctly and don't just apply full force on it. You'll notice it clips in on what would be the bottom of the laptop first and then the top, we just gradually give a little bit of pressure. Okay, so at this point we can thread in the screwdrivers. I'll do it at my normal pace, just like that. Ah, oh, that's so easy. Okay, check the tension on those, make sure they're nicely suited. See, that's the problem of CPU grease, ends up everywhere, try and tidy that up. I'm sure the owner of the laptop won't be happy if it's covered in thermal paste. Okay, that's looking much better. Now, what do we do? Well, we have to validate that that procedure actually worked. Okay, it's not letting on fire now. That's got to be a good sign. Let's uh, log into Windows. Oh, wait, we have a new SSD slash NVMe. We've got to do a quick Windows installation. Okay, while I do that, uh, you guys can keep an eye on it. I'll have a quick coffee. Okay, that was a really quick install. This must be a really good laptop. Okay, here we go. Hopefully you're ready. Okay, it's not melted down yet. Oh, this is suspense. This is pressure. Does it? Oh no, it's not booting. Oh no, what happened? Okay, I was just messing with you. You knew it was going to work. There it is. Okay, so quick thermal stress. How do we stress this? Well, there's only one way of stressing this computer that's appropriate. We need to find a really, really high resolution video, probably something in 4K, uh, should we say 1080p blown up to 4K, that'll do. And, uh, oh, if only we had a good channel. Hi there, Katana. Okay, this'll do. Hardware info, let's monitor. And is that me in the background? Okay, keep an eye on the temperatures there. 71 degrees so far, peak. We're watching a rather interesting video on NVMe fitment onto a HPC. And right now, those thermals are looking really good. Look at that, stressing the CPU out just by watching a video. Wait, why does that use so much CPU power? This is confusing. Okay, we saw a peak of 76 degrees. 
Yes, that's hot for a laptop, but it is a laptop. Laptops just run really warm. So that's actually a really good thermal result. Oh, this person's not subscribed. That's really, really not ideal. They really should subscribe if they don't want to miss out on the next video. Hopefully you consider subscribing. Okay, on to some bonus content while I drink my coffee. Now, interesting stuff here. That was a cool laptop and all, but... Smack! That's right. There's something better out there. This is the HP ZBook. I'm not going to tell you which one just yet. There has to be a little bit of suspense. This will be a future video. Check out this machine. Now, this is a really, really high-performance laptop. We're talking... Oh, I don't know, probably knock the Dell out of the park maybe 10 times over. This is an incredible laptop, well worthy of the HP uh, Z label there. Very, very powerful. Now, it'd be really cool. Should we open this up and have a look at it now? Yeah, that'd be really cool. Oh, that looks really cool. Let's see, does this have one of those keyboards that light up? I really, really love those laptops where the keyboards light up. Man, that's tidy. Very, very tidy. Okay, let's see what this is running. Oh, no, wait, this is meant to be the next video. Oh, sorry, we're not going to be able to do that now. So we'll just sort of phase this out. Okay, no, nope, no, nope, we're not going to show you that now. Stay tuned for next time. We'll go through the HP ZBook and do a full inspection. And we might even do a thermal regrease because it's running a bit warm as well. That's right. These laptops do eventually need some thermal paste. We'll do some inspection and get that one back up and running. Time to get serious. I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.